Hello everyone, Gene Molina here, Natural Tennis Solutions. So we are going over this energy and the actual direction that it needs to travel. So if I kind of go over where this energy starts and where it passes through and then where it ends, then we can actually get an idea of, of what we're trying to get to. Where is the end product? So we should start from the ground, right? Our feet are on the ground and we do need to use some of the ground reaction force. From here, what I will do is I will explain there are seven major joints that we need to go through. We need this energy to go through in order for the fluidity to be there. If it skips any of these joints, then our fluidity is gone. It's just dissipated and the max potential speed on the shot is actually diminished. So we start down with the ankle. So that is the first joint that we start with because that is the closest one to the ground, the closest major joint to the ground. From there it moves up into our knee. From there it moves up into our hip. After the hip it goes into the S1 I believe it is. I'm correct. Yeah, I think I remember it right. The S1, which is that joint that goes from the hip bone, the pelvis, to the back. From there, it moves all the way up and across into our shoulder. Then it goes into the elbow and then it goes into the wrist. So if we count them up, it's ankle, one, two with the knee, three with the hip, four with the S1, five with the shoulder, six with the elbow, and seven with the wrist. Those are the seven major joints that are going to flow and get the energy into the racket, which eventually gets the energy into the ball. So if, if you stand sideways very loosely and you have your arms next to you, Notice the position of your hands. Notice what happens. The index and thumb kind of make a C, backward C if you're a righty, a C if you're a lefty. The other three fingers are kind of a little bit tilted down. That's the position that your hand gets into. So the flow that comes from the ground all the way through those joints, obviously through muscles as well, but the major joints are what really make the fluidity happen all the way into the final release point, which is that wrist, right? The wrist is what actually goes through, but truly you want to be feeling that all the energy, the, the last piece of energy that you just put through this shot, it went into these two fingers. If I hold my racket and I hold my racket like this and I teach this a lot to my students that when they do things they should actually hold the racket like this because this takes away your actual grip strength. These three fingers when you put them around and you squeeze you can get so much grip strength but when you only use these two the grip strength is reduced. There's not a lot. That strength can turn into fluidity and the fluidity goes into the racket which goes into the ball. You maximize the speed every time when you can get the energy to flow all the way through those joints and get to that release point. The release point is going to be those two. Right now when I go through this and I just use those joints in a very slow way, I'm very, being very slow right now, the energy I'm putting into this racket is still pretty good. What do you think? Do you think by doing this right now, see the swing? Can that energy put the ball over the net right now? Now here's the thing. I don't want to try to hit it over the net. Whenever you do these types of things, don't control it. You have to let it happen. That's the only way you discover new things is to let things happen. So with this energy that I've been putting into the shot, I just want to see if I can actually hit the ball, even just hit the ball. Let's see. So three fingers are off. 
I'm letting the energy go through all of this. I'm just, I'm pushing into the ground, letting it come up, and then just flowing through. There's no major follow through, none of that. I'm just letting the energy go. So how much energy can go into this? Ready? So not enough to get it over the net. I'm sure if I figure out how to get more lift, it will. But notice, do I need to hit it over the net? No. I'm trying to stay fluid and use all of these joints to get through. But this is enough energy to get it pretty close to going over the net. So as long as I push the energy in, that one was a little shank, right? Because there's not a lot of control with this. But that's the whole point. A lot of you are going to say, but I have no control when you do this. When you hold a racket like this, you have no control. And that is what I want you to experience. I need you to experience letting go of control. Control is what's killing your game. Control is what you think you're supposed to be doing. You're not supposed to be controlling. You're supposed to be letting go. Through letting go, you can control. So can you let go of your control? This is letting go of control. Holding here, letting all that energy go into the ball, and that's it. Now, of course, we're at home right now, so you're not gonna be able to do this, but you can do this. You can hold it like this, and you can practice. Now, here's the final point with this. If we work backwards, this beginning joint, right? And then this being the second joint, and this being the third, instead of starting from the ground. If we go the opposite way, so now my wrist is what's going to do something, right? So you saw how much energy we had with the, with the shots when I used the full body. Now this is what we get when we only use the wrist, right? So we only use the wrist, right? Now we're gonna use a little bit of the elbow and the wrist, right? So a little bit of the elbow and the wrist. So we got a little more. Should make sense, right? With the wrist, we get a little. With the elbow and the wrist, we get a little more. Now the shoulder and the wrist, right? Shoulder and the wrist. So we get a little more, right? Shoulder and the wrist, okay? So now hip, shoulder, and the wrist. Let's see, right? We get even more. So hip, shoulder, and the wrist. And then we add in the ankle and the knee, right? So the ankle and the knee, and oh, even better this time, I got it to go over. But notice how that fluidity went. Not a lot of power in your wrist. Your wrist actually doesn't even have muscles in it. It's all, it's a it's joints and ligaments. It's a joint and ligaments, right? So this is not what you should be focusing on, right? Every part of the energy that goes through your body should start from the strongest part of your body, which is your legs, your legs, your hip, all of this. That's where it starts. It ends up here, but there's not a lot of muscle in there. Elbow doesn't have any muscles in it. The shoulder joint does not have any muscles in it. The shoulder muscles do, but not the joint. Same with any of these joints. There's no muscles in there. It's just the path that they have to take. So as long as we are making the path come from bigger muscles, our energy will be more efficient. If our energy comes from smaller muscles, which a lot of people try to use the shoulder, and they try to keep this tight and still, and this is not gonna give you fluidity. Sure, I can hit hard. I can definitely hit hard, but the control goes away even worse because under pressure in match play, I get even tighter. So if I'm already tight in practice, even tighter in match play. So there goes the energy and the, the flow and, and kind of the direction that it's supposed to go. Um, let me know what you think. Let me know what you think about these videos. I'm, I'm trying to make them a little more informative to the point where you can learn a little bit, but it's small, it's small little chunks. So right now, just try to get that, get that idea that this, this is where 
the energy is going into. It's all flowing into there. All right, questions, comments, let me know. See you on the next one.